guys, welcome back to the channel. We got another episode about the protege today and we are just jumping straight into things. I'm getting pretty excited about this build because we are getting really close to getting the engine back in. So what you guys just saw was just finishing up, sealing off the engine pretty much. We got the oil pan, the valve cover, uh, little random bits and pieces here and there. So the next step is gonna be to get the flywheel, the clutch and the pressure plate installed onto the engine. And then after we do that, we can mate the transmission and the engine back together and hopefully drop this thing in the car pretty soon. We also have new motor mounts and a bunch of other random goodies that we need to put on here. I'm also gonna see if I can get the turbo manifold mounted onto the engine just cause it'll be a little bit easier with it off the hoist or out of the car. I have to wait on the intake manifold because getting the rear motor mount bolted together is kind of a pain when you have the intake manifold installed. So we'll do that once the engine is back in the car, but we can get most other accessories back on the engine before we drop it in, which is pretty nice. I'm also having a bit of a turbo nightmare right now. I have kind of a weird situation with this whole turbo setup because I need the manifold and the downpipe, but this compressor and turbo and all this stuff, it's like comically blown up. Like there's so much shaft play in this thing. While I was trying to remove this, of course, a couple of the nuts rounded off on here and they're stuck. So I could probably get this one. The main issue is this last nut that's on the backside over here. I don't really have a way to get that off. And that one is like super rounded off. You can see it's, it's kind of shiny. It's a pretty bad situation. So since I'm not using this turbo and it has essentially no value since it's just some eBay garbage, I think I'm just gonna cut the hot side with a Sawzall. Of course, I'm gonna be careful not to cut my manifold, but all this stuff right here, I can just remove this problem from my life. Okay, it's the next day and Brad is here now, thankfully. Woohoo! Aren't you so excited to be? I'm so excited. To give your labor for free? Oh yeah. He's excited, I promise. So what you guys last saw was me chopping the hot side of the compressor housing off. I spent a little bit of time off camera just getting the rest of those nuts off of the manifold. So now we have our exhaust manifold free from the piece of crap turbo that we were using. I had to use some extractors. It was a whole thing but it doesn't matter because we got what we needed. So our next step is gonna be getting a few of these pieces added to the engine. So we gotta get the manifold, of course, and then we also need to get the thermostat housing and a couple gaskets and seals here and there. We went to the hardware store and got a giant bag of hardware. I spent like $30 on nuts and bolts. It was great. So now we should be ready to spend some time just piecing things together. This in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna go in. Yes. So <laughs> best, but the best. <laughs> Have our clutch kit here. You ever seen a clutch disc before? No. <laughs> well, now you have. Oh, clutch cover. My bad. Not mm. pressure plate. I'm just a stupid American. Yeah, you're just a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Where are the bolts? Pressure plate. Are you serious, bro? I already spent like sixty dollars at the hardware store. Okay, so here's the dilemma that we ran into. The XD clutch kit didn't come with new pressure plate bolts. Tomorrow, Brad is gonna stop back by in the morning and before we start recording, I'm gonna find the bolts. But luckily, in the meantime, we have a couple hoses. We had to get these new O-rings and they fit on there very nicely. So these have to go into the thermostat housing and they kind of run alongside the engine block and somehow fit behind like the, the turbo. And yeah, exhaust manifold. We don't know what we're doing. No. We're, we're trying. Amateurs. <laughs> Right, guys we're now on day three of this process we didn't get any hardware with the xd clutch kit so this morning we went and got the right hardware oh brad's back of course <laughs> <laughs> 
I love just like putting people on camera with, yeah, with so no cue. I am too, it's fine. I also pulled the exhaust manifold back off. We have to get the turbo mounted on here before it goes on the engine because otherwise you can't get to one of the, the nuts on like the back corner. So uh, we'll install the turbo on the downpipe and then reinstall that. After that, I think we'll just drop it in the car, bro. We'll get slap that thing in there. Yeah, just just slap it right in. Slap it in. All right guys, so we cannot get the snap ring off of this turbo. It's just so seized inside the compressor housing. It's been on there for like 20 years probably. And I don't wanna risk breaking it because it's probably expensive or if you can even get that snap ring, I have no idea. That's just a sort of rabbit hole that I do not wanna go down. We were just looking at the engine setup. If we don't clock it, it is gonna add like I don't know, probably six to eight inches worth of extra tubing because the compressor outlet goes up and we need to route it over this direction. Whereas if we clock it down, it may make the tubing shorter, but also it's gonna interfere with the lower radiator hose connection for this. So for the time being, I'm just gonna run the stock orientation. I would be nice to clock it, but ultimately I don't think that it's the end of the world. We'll just have a little bit of extra intercooler piping and we'll be able to use all the factory locations for the wastegate. I guess that's just the trade-off. If you wanna drill and tap holes and rotate it, you can, but I think that this is just gonna be a lot simpler and it's gonna allow us to get this car running sooner than later. Okay, um, here's the situation. For you guys, this is just one continuous video. But for me, I just went down the longest Mazda Speed Protégé rabbit hole I have ever been down. The good news is I think I solved the last issue, like the, the last major issue. Of course, there's gonna be tiny stuff, but for the most part, all the random bits and pieces are now on their way to me and we'll have a functioning car before too long. The bad news is that it's been almost two weeks and no more progress has been made because I've just been like finding part numbers and going to the Mazda dealership and talking to people on Facebook. I'm gonna try to explain real quick. So of course, we we're putting a turbo on this car. Now, for those of you that don't know, in 2003, they made the Mazda Speed Protégé. However, it was only the sedan. This car being a hatchback never had a turbo. The hatches were only naturally aspirated. Now, the rabbit hole that I went down and I kind of finally learned the history of this if you can see here, the turbo kit was made by a company called Callaway. All the Mazda Speed Protégé sedans that came to the US to be turbocharged, they showed up naturally aspirated, and then Callaway designed the forced induction system for the car. They had like technicians on site that would install this. For one, like it's really cool. However, it can make sourcing parts for this a little bit difficult. You kind of have to mix and match, find as many of the parts as you can on Facebook, and then Callaway still carries some of their hardware, which fortunately I was able to buy. Thankfully, the car has been fighting me necessarily but just trying to piece this puzzle together and figure out what components are gonna work and what I need to replace and then going and finding part numbers is just an absolute nightmare but I think that we're out of the weeds this is an original Garrett turbo from a Mazda speed protege very cool and that's why we didn't take the snap ring off because I don't want to break this thing it's like kind of a relic but fortunately it's in really good shape there's no shaft play or anything it still spins good so we're running this turbo Technically, you don't have to run water lines to the turbo. However, I want this thing to last. Our main issues are coming from the back side of the engine. Before the turbo kits were installed on any of these cars, they were all naturally aspirated. So on the engine block, you have a port for the oil pressure sensor, a port for the knock sensor, and then this one on the NA cars just had a bolt in it. It's for the coolant jacket. When Callaway designed this kit and they have water-cooled turbos, they have the 
these little lines that connect to the engine block. This line goes right here, it weaves through these other components and it wraps around. But the turbo is not the only component that needs coolant because the Mazda Speed Protégé also used an oil cooler. Now this is a oil to water heat exchanger rather than an air to oil heat exchanger and so it uses a coolant line. So this goes right here, it's like a little sandwich plate where the oil filter goes and then of course you use a longer stud but the oil filter still goes right here but there's a nipple here that gets the water feed from this same jacket. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. You can't just use a regular old banjo bolt right here. You got to get the special one from Callaway that has the third exit on the back of the bolt. Thankfully Callaway still had it on their website. I was able to buy one from them. This also opens a new dilemma where if you have a feed line coming from your block you need to have a return line. This line thankfully it's still in pretty good shape so I'll probably just reuse it. It kind of routes over here and as you can see there's nowhere for it to route back to the system. The Mazda Speed Proteges had a line with a secondary barb and this one right here is from a protege 5 where there wasn't an oil cooler so it just had the heater core line and then a single barb for the throttle body circulation. Now, I did have a couple choices. My ideal choice is to find the line from a Mazda Speed Protégé and put it on here. That took a long time to find, but I was able to find somebody in the community that had one and he's currently working on shipping it to me right now. The other option was to block off the return line and then use this barb, like get a slightly longer hose and use this barb for the return for the oil cooler and then just not run the coolant circuit for the throttle body. For those that don't know, the throttle body coolant line is designed such that in really cold climates, the throttle body won't lock up or freeze. I don't think it's really an issue where I live, but I have heard that the car might have trouble starting in cold weather and we have cold weather coming up very soon. So I didn't really want to compromise it. The car would probably be okay, but since I want to daily drive this vehicle, I really want to maintain as many factory systems as possible. So luckily, as I said, I have the proper coolant line on the way here. This is all gonna function as intended, but it's just taking so long. That being said, it just doesn't make sense to drop it in the car knowing that I'm gonna have to be working on things behind the engine. It's just gonna be a big pain. Oh, and also that coolant line runs underneath the the manifold as you guys saw earlier in this video. It's just being held on here with a couple pieces of hardware. I'm not gonna bolt it all down just to remove it so I can swap that line out. So that is the update. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I'm learning a lot as I go. And this whole swap has been a little bit strange because I'm having to piece together this special stuff. Like I said, if the car was gonna be naturally aspirated, I already have all the parts for the NA car. I could have just plugged it all back in. And in hindsight, that would have been a lot easier. However, I wouldn't have this cool turbo swapped protege that never existed. That's the thing that I really like about this is that it's all OEM Mazda stuff, but you couldn't ever buy one turbocharged from the factory. So I'm kind of doing this like OEM plus sort of swap thing. I think it's really cool, but sometimes it just takes a long time. If you want things done the right way, it takes longer than you would want. But with that being said, that's gonna complete today's video. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. A lot of problems were solved behind the scenes and I just wanted to update you guys about everything. I hope you guys are enjoying this build series. We're so close to having this engine in. Like literally the next video, I'm gonna start it with just installing those coolant lines and then we're dropping it in the car. I've got all the motor mounts, everything's ready to go. I just gotta make sure that it's completely ready before I drop it in there and then I can't record myself working on it and it's just a pain. If you like today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel when you guys do that and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.